Captain William Kidd, a name etched in the annals of history with ubiquitous grace. If his plundered treasures from the genteel profession of piracy were frugally stored, the realm between Key West, Florida, and Halifax, Nova Scotia, might cradle concealed troves. Legends tell of vast caches of gold resting at Gardner's Island, Dunderberg Crow Nest, New York City, Coney Island, Ipswich, the marshes behind Boston, Cape Cod, Nantucket, Isles of Shoals, Money Island, Ocean Beach, the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, and myriad other enigmatic locations. These fabled fortunes lured souls to squander their earthly wealth, all in pursuit of elusive doubloons and guineas. The hope of reaping unearned rewards became the force driving these quests, periodically. Reports of discoveries resuscitated interest, often initiated by a farmer's plow unearthing an iron kettle brimming with gold and silver coins concealed in the throes of the wars of 1776 and 1812. Gardner's Island, a renowned pirate rendezvous, stands singularly as a known repository. In 1699, the Earl of Bellamont unearthed treasures. 783 ounces of gold, 633 ounces of silver, resplendent cloth, silks, satins, and jewels. It was a realm where Captain Kidd once bestowed a lavish shawl upon Miss Gardiner himself. Born in New York, Kidd embarked on a maritime journey as a pirate hunter, but alas, the siren call of roguery beckoned. Boston became the place of his apprehension, where he swaggered the streets audaciously before his hanging in London in 1701. At sea, the apparition of his ship occasionally intertwines with the enigma of the Flying Dutchman. In the vicinity of Lion's Rock near Lyme, Connecticut, a portion of Kidd's treasure is said to be guarded by a demonic sentinel, leaping upon trespassers unless sacred scripture accompanies their quest for wealth. Close to Milford, Connecticut, Charles Island bore witness to a one-night excavation prompted by whispers of Kidd's visit, for what could he be doing ashore if not burying riches? As the lid of an iron chest emerged, a headless specter leapt from the aether, veiling the treasure in eerie blue flames. Upon the diggers' return, their implements had vanished, and the earth lay smooth. Off the coast of Maine on Monhagen Island, a sea-facing cave held the tantalizing promise of treasure under the ethereal protection of spirits. Discoverers encountered a weighty chest within, poised for retrieval, yet an errant word broke the enchantment, leading the spectral guardians to seize the prize. Years later, the cave expanded through explosive means in the relentless pursuit of that chest. As a local adage passed down through the ages proclaimed, dig six feet and you will find iron, dig six more and you will find money. Damariscotta Island, near Kennebec, Maine, shelters a saltwater lake, locally deemed bottomless, yet believed to have embraced kids' treasures. Protection against unwanted visitors was ensured through a chain suspended between rocks at the narrow entrance, with bolts marking its attachment points. Ring bolts were speculated to denote buoy locations, designating the spots where chests descended into the depths. This island, too, has been cloaked in fear, shrouded in tales of the supernatural. Apple Tidor, nestled in the Isles of Shoals off Maine, concealed another refuge where Kidd's legacy remained entwined. Here, one of his crew met his demise condemned to haunt the island and deter seekers. Fishermen refrained from landing after nightfall, fearful of encountering old Bob, whose spectral visage, sporting a crimson halo garb trailing and phosphorescent luminescence, struck terror into the hearts of intruders. Near the Piscataqua River, marking the border between Maine and New Hampshire, another secreted hoard beckoned, leading to a thorough excavation in the early 19th century. Two seekers brandished pick and spade, while a third read the Bible aloud from a drawn circle. Imminent contact with an iron chest was heralded by the clicks of their tools. Nevertheless, as they endeavored to uncover it, the chest slid sideways into the earth. 
An unforeseen interruption ensnared their efforts, causing such a delay that upon their return, the chest had vanished. Their diversion was the appearance of a phantom horse, approaching silently from a distance and halting at the circle where the banishing ritual persisted. The spectral equine grazed and circled before dissolving into the ether. Kid's plug, a rocky prominence on Crow Nest overlooking the Hudson River, boasts a protruding knob akin to a bung ceiling and aperture. It is surmised to conceal a cavern where the formidable captain concealed barrels of his wealth. Perched 200 feet above the cliff, inaccessible from above or below, and weighing many tons, one ponders whether supernatural forces aided in sealing this treasure chamber. A blast or benediction could, perhaps, dislodge the stone, unleashing a cascade of doubloons and diamonds. Rock Hill Estate in Medford, Massachusetts, languished under the haunting presence of a specter. While some identified it as the ghost of a New Hampshire farmer robbed and murdered there, others attributed it to Kidd. In the cellar, iron treasure chests exhibited the same enigmatic behavior as those along the Piscataqua River, vanishing into the depths at the touch of a shovel. Misery Islands, near Salem, Massachusetts, found themselves subjected to meticulous scrutiny under the guidance of spirits, yet the desired fortune eluded capture. Money Hill on Shark River, New Jersey, concealed an abundance requiring no fewer than six ghosts to safeguard it. Sailors in various garb, whether in skeletal form or ethereal, peaceful or vociferous, roamed the site. Jersey locals held in their possession heirlooms exchanged by kids sailors for Applejack and provisions. Two seafaring men were reputed to extract a strongbox from Money Hill some years prior, absconding with two bags of gold. This event prompted an earnest excavation effort, albeit yielding naught but the cultivation of patience in prospectors. Sandy Hook, near Kids Tree in New Jersey, and the clay banks behind the Atlantic Highlands were suspect hiding places. Contrary to popular belief, Old Woman's Hill at the Highlands is not haunted by Kid's crew, but by the spirit of a discontented Native American woman, banished by her own people. Paddy Dabney, residing at Oyster Point, Maryland, crossed paths with Kid in 1836. He recognized the pirate captain from an old portrait when he ventured into the woods, lured by a mysterious light emanating from a pine thicket. There, a strange company engaged in a game of bowls amid a pale, otherworldly radiance. A sinister-looking ruffian supervising the game cast a threatening glance at Paddy, who fled in terror. He later deduced the otherworldly gathering to be devils, for many a seafarer had bartered his soul to the devil. Captain Teach, or Blackbeard, had convinced his crew by shutting himself in the ship's hold, setting sulfur aflame to exterminate rats while enduring suffocation for hours. One day, a mysterious figure, not part of the original crew, materialized on board and vanished just before the ship's fateful wreck. Kidd's act of burying his Bible exemplified his pact with the devil. A flat rock on the northern shore of Liberty Island in New York Harbor also bore hints of the pirates' opulent stash. In 1830, Sergeant Gibbs, stationed on the island, endeavored to uncover the treasure with the aid of a fortune teller and a recruit. On the discovery of a chest about four feet in length, a spectral being with wings, horns, tail, and breath manifest as blue flames erupted from within. Gibbs fell into unconsciousness, narrowly escaping drowning, while his companions fled. The treasure remains concealed to this day. Sighton Rock, Massachusetts, once believed to be inscribed by Kidd to mark a hidden cache, has driven treasure hunters to examine its shores more in the days preceding the American Revolution. A man known as Mud Sam, residing in a cabin at the Battery in New York City, found himself marooned near the site where East River currently intersects with 100th Street. As he lay waiting for the tide to carry him up the sound, a glimmering lantern and the murmur of voices reached his ears, prompting him to shrink back into the shadows. 
apprehension soon gave way to recognition that the intruders were flesh and blood. Tracking them into the woods, he observed them excavate a pit, deposit a strong box, and conceal it. Threatening words from one of the men prompted Sam to utter an exclamation, drawing a pistol shot in response. He fled, carrying the fright with him and refusing to return for several years. When entreaties came in the form of the promise of riches from Wolfert Weber, a cabbage grower, and the assurance of protection from Dr. Nipperhausen, skilled in incantations, Sam finally yielded, leading the treasure seekers to the spot. Upon performing the prescribed incantations, the group began to dig, yet as their spades touched the iron-bound chest's lid, a robust ruffian donning a red flannel cap sprang forth from the underbrush. According to their accounts, the apparition bore the face of the wretch drowned at Corlayer's hook. During their panicked flight, they scarcely took note of him. Upon revisiting the site, no traces of excavation or treasure remained, leaving the possibility that a portion of Kid's wealth now rests snugly in the basement of a city tenement. Weber had embarked on numerous fanciful ventures, abandoning his cabbage crops and dwindling into poverty. He was impoverished, so much so that the final disappointment nearly crushed his spirit. Retiring to his chamber, he penned his will, yet news of a new street crossing his farm and the promise that it would be tenfold more valuable for housing lots than for cabbages rekindled his spirit. He sprang from his bed, dressed, and enjoyed prosperity for many years to come.